Hello and welcome to another episode of The Mature Student. Before I start, I want to say a big shout out to the AA team, that's the Academic Achievement Team at Roehampton, who have personally helped me out and many other students. And thank you for the support of this vlog, The Mature Student. I really appreciate you. And also to the students who've come up to me personally, and said how much they're enjoying it and what they're getting out of it. And a couple actually mentioned to me that they are using um, Grammarly, which is a great online tool, if you don't know already, for editing your work. And as you can see here, I've got um, a document in the background, which I'll show you again in a minute. Um, but I want to go to Grammarly. Now, um, I just want to say, please, if you want to see more episodes like this, try and subscribe because then you won't miss any of the episodes. Some people told me they didn't know when they were coming up. Um, I send messages to those that I've got numbers for. Um, but if you haven't got my number or don't know me personally, then subscribing is the very best way. And please share it because other students will get something out of it as well. So we're talking about Grammarly today. And you can see here, I've actually got an account. It's Grammarly.com, if you don't know. Um, you can see the web address there. And you would sign up. And you can sign up for a free account. Um, but I've signed up for premium because I want, I, you know, I use it for everything. I don't just use it for my academic work. I use it for other things that I do. I write a blog elsewhere and um, I, I have a lot of communication that I do anyway. So it really helps your writing. Um, what I would say about Grammarly is it's fantastic, but you've still got to write, you've still got to check and edit your document afterwards just to make sure it's in context. So don't think Grammarly is going to magically do it all. But what it will do is pick up the major grammatical errors, spellings, uh, context. And it also um, enables you to look to see whether the document you're working on has been plagiarized. And you know that plagiarization is something that you could be marked down on quite severely. So it's a fantastic tool for all those reasons. And by the way, they're not paying me to say this. I just think it's a great tool. Anyway, so what you need to do first of all is to make sure that you set it up properly for your region. So if you're in America, you would set it up for American style selling. Uh, a spelling, I should say. And if you are in the UK, which I am, then um, similar, you would, you would set it up for the UK. So I'm going to go to language preference first. You see the, uh, from the little hand, there are um, a few options. When you go to language preference, you can see mine's already set to British English, but it could go to American English. And American English is very different in many ways to British English. Um, for instance, a U might be dropped in some words like uh, the word color and uh, the word secular, secularization, um, which in England would have an S, would have a Z in America. So there are differences. And if you don't get that right, what you'll find is if you're supposed to be writing British English in a British university, but you've got it set on American English, you might find that your marks go down. So it's important to do the settings first. So I've got it on British English, that's fine. And also I've got something set up called a personal dictionary as well. So these are words that might not come up in Grammarly. Actually, a lot of these words do come up in Grammarly now um, because I didn't set the language preference when I first started. I've just discovered this along the way, like everything else. Um, so um, you need to set that, as I said, and then these words probably will be um, null and void. That is an unusual word, Chineke, 
it isn't commonly used so it needs to be in there if i'm writing about that particular subject so how do you a document and check it you can see um there's a sort of a document sign there with new if you click on that it will either take you to a screen where you can and it says here i don't know if you can see it type or paste control v um your text here so control v is on your keyboard so you press control and v at the same time and it will give you the document now i'd already had a document loaded on there what we need to do though is to um, set some goals the more grammarly knows about the context you are writing so if it's academic writing you need to choose um, academic levels so you need to inform your reader and your reader and your audience are or um, they're experts so they might be professors or doctors um, you need to have formal writing style um, I'll ignore the emotional bit, um, but the academic, it needs to be academic, obviously, because you're at university. So press, press that, and then what you'll find is, you'll find lots of um, highlighting, yellow highlighting on the document. And it's asking us to change um, certain phrases. A great salt lake a vast salt lake so if we change that you see it says like a vast salt lake now because we said it's an academic document it's telling us with that highlighted i that we should not be using the word i in an academic document it's a no-no i is um what we call the first person and we should not be using it if we're writing an essay or your dissertation the only time that i would be acceptable in some cases and you've got to check with your lecturer is if you're writing um a, some sort of reflection or if you do reflective practice in whatever discipline you're studying that's the only time that that would be acceptable so that's a no-no as well now, how do you save this document? Well, again, what you can do is a couple of things you can do. You can do Control A on your keyboard again, right click on your mouse, copy, copy that um, a piece of work, and you can then find your document. And I, you see, I've got the document open that I did before. And you can simply go Control A, which highlights the whole page. And then you do control V, which will paste, and you can see the replacement of that documents there and save it. Um, the other way to do it is, and I'll go back to, um, I'll go back to it. If you um, go to the back link, and you can see there that the documents there, and you can actually download it as well. Yes. And then when you open it up, and it will open in a minute, it will show you that it's actually saved that document as well. You see there, that's plain text. I don't like that text, so I would copy and paste. Um, and But if it was a longer document. Uh, one other tip, I would not put a very, very, very long document in Grammarly. It will take you forever. I would put it in parts if I were you, and then paste it in but that's my preference if you want to do it that way you can it will give you the options though because it's um if you choose premium it will give you those options the basic which is the free um won't give you the sorts of options that i was able to choose just now and also as i mentioned to you you can check for plagiarism with the premium options i personally think that my investment of, I think it was 48 pounds for the year, so it's half price, and you'll probably get a deal at the moment or quite soon because they always have the 50% deals. Watch out for that. I would even pay the full price because it's actually saved me a lot of time 
a lot of work and made my work accurate, which means my grades have gone up. So that's it for me today. That was tip number two, uh, Grammarly. And I would like you, please, and I keep saying it, subscribe, share, like, comment, tell me what else it is that you want to know um, on this channel. Um, and I send these videos out every uh, seven days or so. So uh, get in touch and let me know what you thought. Thanks for listening to The Mature Student and take care and keep focused.